Welcome back. I hope you're ready to write some scripts. Whenever a control is adjusted in the software, it triggers something called the event handler in the Lua script. Every control has its own event handler, and this is what we need to monitor in this example in order to gauge whether or not we want our fader to change colors. So, we're going to tell the control script component that we want to start a function whenever the event handler is triggered. We'll type in DJ gain, a dot for subset, event handler. Now be sure to get the capitalization of this correct. Then an equal sign, and we'll type in function, and we have to name our function. Once again, you can name this whatever you'd like. I'll, I'll call it the fader guy. All right, let me zoom out a bit so I can read all this. Now what this means is that anytime our DJ gains event handler is triggered because someone moved our fader, then it will start a function that we're calling fader guy. Now, every function needs an endpoint, so let's add some space and put an end down there. Now, all we have to do is give the script some conditional statements. We want to tell it that if the fader is set above three decibels, then we want to change the color to red. Simple enough. We type in if, then the function fader guy, subset value is more than three, then fader guy, subset color equals red. All right, let's look at what I just did. You can see that function, if, and then are all in blue. These are keywords. And you can see that three and red are purple. These are values. How is red a value, you may ask? Well, this follows simple HTML color codes. If you search on the internet for HTML colors, then you'll find a list of colors with names and their ID numbers. These are called hexadecimal RGB codes. Now, you can use either the names or the hexadecimal codes for any of these colors in Lua scripting. You could even use their HSV value if you're familiar with those. Now, we're going to use the name red, which is, as you can see, the hex code FF0000. So back to our statement. Our if statement isn't complete yet. We're telling the fader what to do if it's over three, but we need to tell it what to do if it isn't over three as well. So we'll use the else command and then input fader guy subset color equals yellow. All right, now like all commands, this statement isn't finished until we end it. So let's add an end and now we're ready to go. Let's check this out. We'll click on the yellow notification bar to update the script. We can see down here in our debug output menu that there are no problems so far. Actually, let's show this menu in action. What if I made a mistake in my script? Maybe I misspelled fader guy and I didn't capitalize it properly right here. Well, if I made an error, the debug's going to catch it. You see, when I try to move the fader now, I get all of these red errors here in my debug menu. So you can see that it will tell me what line the error is in, line seven, and that'll help you find your mistake. So let me fix that so it's spelled correctly and I'll go back in sync. Now we have no errors, so let's see if our script works. We can grab our fader. We can see that it's under three decibels, so it's yellow. And if we move it above three decibels, then it turns red. Voila. Ultimately, it isn't a whole lot of coding, but if you're completely unfamiliar with computer programming, then it might as well be ancient Egyptian for all the good it does you. But if you're still with me at this point, then let's have some more fun and see what else we can do. Let's add another color to the fader. Maybe we want to use the yellow color when he's getting close to red so that he knows to back off, but the rest of the time we want it to be green. So let's add another condition to our if statement. We'll add else if to create another condition within the same command. We'll type fader guy dot value is less than zero, then fader guy subset color equals green. Now this line has to go in between your if statement and your else statement in order for it to make sense in Lua speak. So I'll update the script. Now we can see that when it's under zero, it's green. When it's over zero, it's yellow. And when it's over three, it's red. Now, what else could we do? Let's really punish the DJ for going too loud. Rather than change the color to red, let's make it so that the gain automatically goes down to negative 10 decibels. We simply change this line here to rather than changing the color to red, we'll change it so it says fader guy value equals negative 10. I'll update the script. Now, every time the DJ pushes the gain too far, it'll all of a sudden dive down to negative 10 and remind him not to push it that far again. I have an idea. Let's go even farther with this. There's a control property called is invisible. Let's add a statement here before our control gets pushed down to negative 10. We'll add a separate condition. If fader guy subset value is more than three, then 
fader guy subset is invisible equals true. And we'll end that statement as well. And we'll update our script. Now you can see that for most of the time his fader is green. When he goes above zero, he turns yellow. And when he hits three, not only does it dive down to negative 10, but it disappears entirely. Boom, the control is gone. He doesn't get to play anymore. Well, that'll teach him. You can see how your knowledge of Lua, combined with the QSYS library of Lua controls, can open a whole new level of customization for your design. Now once again, we can only give you a taste of it here in this tutorial. So if you're interested in becoming more versed in Lua scripting, then you'll have to pursue that on your own. Now thank you, and we'll see you next time.